Hey guys, it's Dr. Alicia here from She Found Health. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about exercise in pregnancy and get you some tips on staying healthy from preconception all the way to postpartum. We're going to talk about what is exercise, what are we talking about, and what are our options in pregnancy. We're then going to talk about how it benefits you as a pregnant woman and how it benefits your baby. We'll go through some common transitions that we need to make as we go through the pregnancy period. And at the end, we'll talk about what exercises we should not be doing in pregnancy and what conditions of pregnancy do we need to be a little bit more cautious about. Welcome to She Found Health on YouTube. Our videos are all about preconception, pregnancy, labor delivery, breastfeeding, and postpartum. If you are interested in this, please hit the subscribe button below and hit the bell to get notified every time we have new content. Please read our medical disclaimer in the show notes. If you check out our website at www.shefoundhealth.ca in the show notes, you can uh, sign up for our community and you'll get a weekly email newsletter with all of our free content that we put out. We put it out every Wednesdays on bump day. So let's get into today's show. So exercise in pregnancy is so important, just like it is outside of pregnancy. And there's a huge variety of things that you are able to do. Our recommendations are to do 30 to 45 minutes of exercise, so strength training, huff and puff, a little bit of cardiovascular fitness, and stretching uh, about three to four times a week. You can do this by yourself, you can do it as a part of a team, or you can do it with a friend. You can do anything from walking, hiking, running, Zumba classes, soccer, swimming, you name it, there are so many possibilities. You just need to find something that you enjoy doing and that you will keep doing on a regular basis and try to mix it up a little bit. So how does exercise benefit you as a pregnant woman? Well, there's so many benefits we know. So number one, exercise and staying fit will allow you to have an easier pregnancy. The stronger and healthier we are, the less aches and pains and joint and bony pains that we get. We're able to maintain our fitness and our strength and hold our posture better throughout the pregnancy. And that's particularly important when it comes to lower back pain, which is extremely common in pregnancy, especially as we get farther along. So by starting off your fitness regime earlier and keeping your core strength up as best you can, you're going to have less pain, especially in your back later in pregnancy. The second thing is that we know being active helps our sleep. And as we get more pregnant, sleep becomes a bigger issue for us. It's harder to fall asleep. It's harder to be comfortable when you are sleeping. And you tend to wake up more frequently and have a harder time getting back to sleep. So the more fit and active you are in your day, the better your sleep will be. And we know that it's a positive cycle. If you sleep well, the next day you'll have more energy. You'll be more likely to be active and get your exercise in, and so you'll sleep better the next night. The third thing is, is it benefits your mood. We know that exercise helps mood, and there's so many mood disorders that pop up in pregnancy and the postpartum that anything we can do to help lessen those or prevent those is really, really important. So not only do we get a better night's sleep, which also helps our mood, But exercise gives us another opportunity, that social engagement and interaction that we really need. So go for a walk with a friend, Uh, join a sports team and get active in that so you have a little bit more of a community. Do some prenatal yoga and meet other moms who are at a similar spot as you so that you guys can bond together throughout the pregnancy and especially in that postpartum period. The fourth way it benefits us is a lot of us Most women struggle with body image in one way or shape or form. I wish it wasn't the case, but it is. So staying fit and healthy gives you more confidence in your own skin. And throughout pregnancy, we have huge changes that go on in our body. Um, And so if we can kind of maintain more self-confidence, we'll be better off at the end of it. So staying fit, healthy and active, being able to continue to do what you want to do with your own body gives you more power and control over your body. Number five, exercise also helps to reduce some complications of pregnancy. Going into your pregnancy fit and strong and healthy actually makes it less likely for you to get certain complications of pregnancy. If you want to check out our preparing for pregnancy guide, it's linked in the notes below. You can have a look at that. Go to our website and download it from our website. It's got all kinds of great tips and tricks on how to prepare for pregnancy. And even if you're in the early stages of pregnancy, how to prepare for the rest of your pregnancy. So make sure to check that out. 
So exercise along with healthy food choices helps to reduce our risk of obesity before and during pregnancy, which also helps to reduce our risk of getting diabetes in pregnancy. If you also suffer for some chronic medical conditions like high blood pressure, uh, diabetes, pre-pregnancy, being fit and healthy during your pregnancy can help reduce the risks of any complications that those may bring to your pregnancy. Number six, an easier time at labor and delivery. Now we all talk about how hard labor and delivery is, and it is. Labor is like running a marathon or two marathons, depending on how long it takes. And having to push a baby out is like a two hour CrossFit class or high intensity interval training class. So by staying fit and healthy during pregnancy, you can actually do some training for this and make your labor and delivery experience easier and more joyful. Being fit and healthy during your pregnancy will also help your recovery from your delivery, whether that's a vaginal delivery or a cesarean section, easier and more manageable. So you can have a better time enjoying that sweet little newborn of yours. So if you want to know more about how you can stay fit and healthy and prepare to push, there's a link to a great course down below. It's all about preparing for a labor and delivery in that postpartum recovery. It covers everything from diastasis recti, which is the separation of your abdominal muscles, to preparing your perineum for delivery and your pelvic floor for delivery, and how to recover afterwards to get yourself fit and strong again. It's a great course. Check out the link below. So we've covered what are the benefits to you when you're pregnant. Now let's talk about what are the benefits to your baby, and there certainly are some. So number one, healthy nutrition and exercise during pregnancy helps to maintain your baby's blood sugar just like it does yours. You're giving your baby all the blood that they need and everything that's in your blood gets passed along to your baby. So that includes the sugar levels. So if you're able to maintain your sugar levels, your baby is as well, and they're not going to have these big highs and lows that are going to affect them postpartum. So the more healthy you are and the, fit, the fitter you are during pregnancy, the better chance your baby has at regulating its own blood sugars right after it's born. Number two is we also have some new information coming out that's leading us to believe that women who exercise for 30 minutes at least three times a week have babies who are born with brain development that is above those women who didn't and also less body fat on them and a slower heart rate. And we think that that means that over the long term, they'll actually be healthier and benefit from their mom's exercising in pregnancy. The third piece of the puzzle is that women make huge changes in pregnancy. This is such a time when women are really motivated to make significant changes and they often will maintain those changes. So if you can start exercising in pregnancy, you're more likely to continue that postpartum and set a really great example for your kids. They'll see you exercising and they'll be more keen to as well which has long-term benefits for them as well if you can get them into exercising early in childhood. So now let's talk about how that might look throughout your pregnancy. In the first trimester, you can be nauseous, you can be extremely tired, and so exercise can be really tough. So you just do the best you can. If you can get out for a walk three or four times a week, that's wonderful. For people who are used to being really active and fit, this is going to be a real challenge because you're going to want to stay active and fit during this first trimester, but your body may not let you. So just readjust your expectations. And once you hit that second trimester, you're probably going to be feeling quite a bit better. If you want to check out our video on the five most common symptoms in early pregnancy and how you can optimize those, check it out here. Now, as I said, that second trimester, we often start feeling a little bit more like ourselves. Our energy comes back. We're not feeling as, as nauseous. So everything's a little bit better. This is a great opportunity to get into your exercise regime again. Pretty much anything you've been doing prior to pregnancy, you can continue to do throughout your pregnancy. We'll talk a little bit more about the things that we want you to avoid later in the show. But for the most part, continue doing it. If you haven't been exercising before, make sure you have a chat with your care provider about how you can slowly ramp up and get into it. But walking is great exercise. So if you've not done anything before and you wanna get into walking or prenatal yoga, that's a great start. Now, one thing that I often get asked about is what about my abdominal muscles? I wanna maintain my core strength. And of course you do, you totally should. But we want you to avoid working out those up and down straight in the middle abdominal muscles. They are gonna stretch as your pregnancy grows and we want them to stretch naturally because we want them to not separate or have that diastasis um, that can cause problems later on. So just let those front abdominal muscles grow. 
work on the side ones. And so that's a lot of rotational work or side planks. Uh, and you can certainly talk to a sports um, medicine specialist or an athletic therapist or a kinesiologist about how you can get this uh, strengthened up. And your lower back, same thing. Again, that course we mentioned before, the Prepare to Push, has information about all of this. So if you want to just have a quick, easy online uh, class, then that's the one for you. So in third trimester, as we're starting, starting to get bigger, we're going to notice our center of graph, gravity is shifting a little bit. So some things are going to become more challenging. You're also holding more weight, so up and down exercises is going to probably hurt your knees a little bit more. The other thing that happens is our body releases a hormone called relaxin. And what this does is it loosens our tendons and ligaments so our pelvis can shift more during delivery to fit our baby out. But it works all over our body. So we're certainly more prone to injuries in that third trimester. So shifting and pivoting like you would find in soccer or football can be a little bit more dangerous and lead to more injuries in our knees. So maybe shifting to more inline like running or swimming, biking are all great. Going for hikes, continuing on with your prenatal yoga, that's all fine. But you may need to readjust your exercise regime as you move through pregnancy. So we would love to hear about what you did for exercise in your pregnancy and how you changed that throughout the pregnancy. So if you'd leave some comments, that would be great. It also helps other mamas figure out how they can maneuver their exercise regime throughout pregnancy. So now let's get to what do we want to avoid in pregnancy? So if you have a nice, normal, healthy pregnancy, you can do most things. There are certain pieces that we want to avoid though. So one thing we want you to avoid is scuba diving in pregnancy. This is kind of the one big and hard, fast rule about exercise in pregnancy is no scuba diving. The other thing that we want you to be careful about, especially in the first trimester, is anything that gets your core temperature elevated. So think running a marathon in Las Vegas in the middle of summer. Anything that kind of brings your core temperature up, we want you to avoid that, especially in that first trimester. Um, so making sure that you're modifying your activities to stay as cool as you can and staying really well hydrated. Now, I would say this probably applies for the second and third trimesters as well, but specifically in that first trimester, we don't want your core temperature going up. It can cause abnormalities uh, in your baby. One thing that we all get a little bit nervous about is contact sports or anything that might cause some abdominal or belly trauma. So as your uterus is growing out of your pelvis around 12 to 14 weeks, we want you to try to avoid those types of activities. So that's contact sports like rugby or contact football or even kind of soccer if you think you're going to get uh, a ball in the abdomen. We want you to try to avoid that. Those sports are also a bit riskier in the third trimester due to increased injuries that we talked about earlier with that relaxing hormones and our tendons and ligaments getting a little bit looser. A couple other sports that we try to get you to avoid is anything that has a big fall risk. So things we're talking about, horseback riding or mountain biking. So things that have put you at a little bit of a higher risk of falling and having trauma. So you know yourself best, what your skill sets are, and if you're riding horses, what your horse is like. So just make some adjustments to what you do to keep yourself safe. Another thing we need to remember is in the second trimester, our blood pressure naturally drops. And so that what that means is often women get very dizzy when they stand up quickly or they can feel like they're going to faint. Um, and so anything that increases your heat, such as hot yoga, is going to drop your blood pressure even more. So being very cautious if you're in a warmer environment about how you're getting up and how you're feeling. If you're feeling lightheaded or woozy, make sure you sit or lie down until that passes and maybe start passing on that type of activity. The final thing I want to talk about is Valsalva maneuvers. So that's when we have a huge amount of intra-abdominal pressure. So think about those big weight lifters. When they're lifting those heavy weights, they hold their breath and they bear down really hard. Probably something we should avoid, uh, especially as we're moving forward in our pregnancy. So if you're a power lifter or a big weight lifter, keep doing it. Don't aim for any personal best at this time and maybe drop your weights down by 25 to 30%. So now that we talked about healthy pregnancies, let's talk about some pregnancy complications that we may need to adjust our exercise in. So the first group of those is people with medical conditions going into pregnancy. So the our bodies go through a huge amount of change. Specifically, our hearts and lungs have to do a lot more work than they're used to. So anybody who has significant heart disease or lung problems, like significant asthma or other issues, really needs to talk to their care provider about what kind of exercise they can do in pregnancy safely. 
The other group of people, women, are people who have complications that have arisen in pregnancy. This can be a few different things, but the main bulk of these women are women who are at an increased risk of preterm labor. So that's going into labor before 37 weeks. So risk factors that increase this risk are multiple pregnancies. So if you have twins or triplets, we want you to be a little bit more cautious with your exercise, especially as you're getting into that third trimester. Any abnormal uterine shapes. So there's a couple of different shapes that just put you at an increased risk for preterm labor. If you have an already known shortened cervix, so if, you're sh so if you've been told that your cervix is shorter than it should be in your pregnancy, that's another way we want to be cautious about. And if you've already ruptured your membranes, so if you're 32 weeks and you've broken your waters and we're just trying to keep you pregnant for a bit longer as we can safely, we want you to avoid any strenuous exercise for sure. So talk to your care provider about what you can and cannot do. The other group of people we need to be careful about are those with placenta previa. So that's when your placenta sits right on top of your cervix. And so you have a much higher risk of bleeding, especially in that third trimester. So if you've been told you have placenta previa, just talk to your care provider about what modifications you might have to make with your exercise regime. Now, all of the things I listed, you should know about. So if you're sitting there and you haven't been told you have any of these, then go ahead and follow the other instructions that we talked about, but these don't apply to you. If you have been told you've got one of these conditions, talk to your care provider to make a good exercise plan for you. For the vast majority of women, we can still get you some exercise. It just may have to be modified. So there you have it, exercise and pregnancy. Let's just do a quick recap for everybody. Number one, exercise is good in pregnancy. It's good for your mood, it's good for your sleep, it's good for aches and pains, and it gets you an easier labor delivery and postpartum recovery. Exercise is good for your baby. It helps them to regulate their blood sugars and probably has really long lasting effects on your baby's health. You will need to modify your exercise regime as you go through pregnancy, and that is okay. Just do the best you can to get 30 to 45 minutes of exercise three to four times a week or more if you want. We want you to avoid any high risk activities that could impact your pregnancy. And if you go into pregnancy with certain medical complications or things come up in pregnancy, uh, make sure you talk to your care provider about how to modify your exercise regime to make it safe for your baby. So if you like this video and this kind of contact, please make sure to check out our website at www.shefoundhealth.ca. Join our community and we send out email newsletters every week with all kinds of free, interesting content. Make sure to subscribe below and check out these other videos on other common uh, issues in pregnancy. And also, we'd really love to hear about any content ideas that you have and you want to hear from us. Thanks and have a great day.